Hi, this is Nathaniel Rayliff. Joseph Pope the Third, And we're from Nathaniel Rayliff. And the Night, Night Sweats. Sweats. And you're watching Ambi. Keep watching. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to an interview with Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. How are ya? Very I'm good. well, thank you. Uh, of course, you were in Toronto today. What did you guys get into town? We got in yesterday, actually. We did a bunch of like promo and stuff. So. And you enjoying your time so far? Yeah. Yeah, we went out to dinner last night, and that's about it. Didn't really. Yeah, it was like we were pretty seven. hungover from the night before. <laughs> yeah, we're back. So then we had to Montreal. do a bunch of stuff yesterday, uh, and. Yeah, it was a pretty long day. <laughs> well, this Toronto date is part of the current North American tour you're on at the moment. How are the shows treating you? Are you enjoying your time? We were home for four and a half days after being out for 27 days mm -hmm. and loving every minute of it. But uh, it was nice to have a moment to catch our breath and see our families um, and then come to Canada and play Quebec City. It was amazing. Montreal was amazing. Uh, the crowds have just been incredible. So we were re-energized, and we're glad to be here to do that tonight. I was re-energized. Maybe you weren't. I mean, I, I don't know. I might have been the first two days, but then, yeah, we drank too much. And now, I'm, <laughs> now I'm feeling energetic again. Okay, it's, co it's all coming back. <coughs> well, Vina, you're on the road. You, of course, get to discover a bunch of new places that you obviously wouldn't have before just because you're going from place to place. So has anywhere stuck out to you, whether you visited there before, it's just kind of near and dear to your heart that you enjoyed playing? Um, well, just these first couple of shows have been great because we've never played Quebec City and uh, Montreal, that was really good too. So, Yeah, we played uh, Montreal as a folk project that we used to have um, about a year ago. And uh, one of our, our members, a keyboard player, Mark, is a chef and was very, very excited to be in Montreal because of the food culture there. And um, So yeah, we were really stoked to be back there. I think he was excited today here in Toronto for like buns and banh mi and... He had dumplings. Dumplings. <laughs> he had dumplings. I love how much food goes hand in hand with being on the road. Like it's... Yeah, well you gotta time out when you get to eat and don't eat and uh, it's really... I don't know. It's an important part of your day. Well, and you don't want to eat too close to performing because you might burp while you're sitting. <laughs> yeah. Has that ever happened? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah? I've had the aura of just like horrible heartburn because oh. I had Indian food. And it just. <laughs> and after that, I was like, I can never, never eat again. Indian food again. Wasn't that in Hamburg that happened? Or no, yeah, Hamburg it was, was like, I, I almost had to leave the stage. It was so, I was in so much pain. It was like, oh. <laughs> <coughs> And it's it's not hard. like you can stop the show fight. and be like, sorry, i got to find some Rolaids or Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, of course, must discuss your latest record release, your self-titled album. We're really, really loving it. Just the harmonies, the whole like soul of the album is just such a good Thank record. You. And for myself, of course, it was released on Legendary Stacks label and I just grew up listening to like Sam and Dave and Otis Redding and like I remember that being played around my house so much when I was younger. So for you guys, how much did it mean to be signed on that and have the album come out on that? Well, I didn't believe you when you first told me. Yeah, well, when I was first, I was first originally working with Concord, um, and Concord has bought Stax Records. I was like, you know, I was like, I don't know if it's possible, but like, what, you know, the sound I want this record to be is really influenced by that, the southern sort of soul sound. And I was like, is there any way this can come out through Stax and not just Concord? Uh, and we ended up working it out, and I think it's a, a great fit to, you know, and, and an honor to be on, you know, I feel a little unworthy at times to be <laughs> on such a part of a, such a great label and a great history with uh, amazing musicians and artists that kind of help change and change what music is nowadays. And they hadn't really put much out for a long time. It was kind of a dormant label, you know, so not only was it an honor, but it was also pretty nerve wracking to, uh, to be one of the first bands they were putting out again, you know. We got lucky. Well, which Stax artists in particular do you think influenced you the most for this new album? Because I know we've um, mentioned a couple I'm in the past. I'm Sam and Dave guy. Okay, cool. And Otis. Um, but uh, what I really wanted to try to do for this record was kind of make something that was reminiscent of Sam and Dave and the band. How about yourself? Uh, well, I would have to agree with that. And it's been nice to be in Canada and talk about the band so much since they're mostly all Canadian, right? Not Levon. 
Well, yeah, not Levon. The other dudes. They're heroes of ours. And I mentioned the harmonies that are shown on the album before. Such yeah. a great part of it. Where do you feel your love of harmonies began? Uh, Tonight, you've been singing together for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, we have. Uh, I don't, you know, from, uh, my parents used to sing harmony together and make me sing with them. It was pretty torture when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. It was just kind of something that always resonated with me, whether it be like Crosby, Stills, and Nash or... I don't know, or just, you know, any, like, 70s rock, the band, for example, the harmonies they did together, and um, and then, of course, you know, things like Soulsters or um, Sam and Dave, and uh, a few other acts there. Yeah. I mean, we also, like, would drive around in my car in high school with the oldie station on, and a lot of Everly the Brothers. Everly Brothers stuff was something that really moved us when we were younger, and I grew up, you know, singing in, like, a church choir a little bit, with which harmonies weren't very good but you know just understanding the way voices work together and then when we started playing music together it just kind of became very a natural way for us to kind of support whatever either of us were writing at the time and you know like he said his family were yeah. incredibly good singing together so that was inspiring to see it's a song on the album the single sob mm -hmm. and so many people are relating to this track and i know it was actually written as a joke to begin with yeah, it was like kind of making light of a bad situation. But yeah, I didn't really write it with too much, um, I don't know, it, it was just a good space filler in our show. <coughs> yeah, we, we had a, a good set coming together for the first time, but it just seemed like a, f it, kind of the way the idea started and then the arrangement and everything, it just seemed like a good, it would be really fun to play this live. You know what I mean? And it has been, but... Being that that's the way it came together, were you surprised at how many people were connecting with the tracks? I see tweets all of the time. And there's a story where you were talking about um, a wife speaking with you about her husband. Yeah. And just the, the meaning that it had to the couple. Like well, that like he had been sober for like 30 years or something and it was brought up a lot of conversations about his problem with alcoholism. Um, and she was just like, thanks so much. I was like, you're welcome right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, we've all have stories about knowing people with addiction or struggling with it ourselves. So, I think it's relatable to a lot of folks just for that particular reason. Absolutely. Whether it's alcohol or something else. You know. Yeah. And I came across a great quote here from Nathaniel, which is about just the new record and how you want it to be kind of sexy, but sometimes it feels like a preacher vibe, which is kind of funny. How do you balance that fine line between writing a sexier song and then having those preacher vibes in there? Oh, man. I think pre <laughs> preachers take advantage of people all the time. So, uh, you know, whether it be, you know, I'm not into young kids, so can't really take advantage of that. But uh, I don't know. Wow, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, knew where it was going at the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah right no, away, right away. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you did, too. Said. That's why you asked. Uh, no, I, I mean, I just had to kind of have a, a good time with it. I think it's fun. So, um, And hopefully people think I'm sexy. That would be nice. All right. He put together a really sexy band, so it's easy for him. Yeah, you know, I got these guys to back me up. So if I look bad, <laughs> I still look good. Somebody's, somebody's going to think one of us is sexy. Right. Hopefully. <laughs> At some point. Right. Well, being that you have these guys, the Night Sweats, uh, of course you had your two solo records before this album release. Do you foresee another album in the future? Yeah, I mean, we'll make another. We're really busy touring since the record hasn't even been out that long. So, uh, But hopefully maybe next year sometime we'll start working on some more. I mean, we've been working on material while we travel, uh, but it'd be nice to get into the studio again before the end of next year. So. To see that. That's exciting. Yeah. And just one last thing about the name, which I haven't actually found anywhere. The Night Sweats. What gives you both the Night Sweats? Whether it's when it's you're on the road or when you're at home? Definitely withdraws. Yeah. Alcohol mm. withdraws. <coughs> <coughs> Give him a, a drink. <laughs> we've got a friend who, even if he's not drunk, is the sweatiest sleeper I've ever slept next to in my life. And really? I, you know, I think it just, some people run hot, you know? <laughs> I, I have that problem. I run yeah, way too hot. Yeah. I don't usually get the night sweats. If I do, I'm either sick or I had too much to drink or something. Okay. Or, or it's pre-menopausal. Yeah, or that. 
it's going back to the fact that you've known each other for a long time and you've been singing together and playing together what would you say is the best part about being in this band together just being able i mean it's kind of like we've been kids for our whole lives and never really grew <laughs> up so that's pretty true pretty much acting like we did when we were teenagers so. yeah we get in trouble sometimes yeah we have a bad we keep doing stupid shit. How do you get in trouble? Well, we just, just we're, we're kind of jackasses walls, every once in a while. <laughs> breaking furniture on yeah, that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're not trying to fulfill any, like, rock and roll fantasy. So since we got a little popularity for the first time in our life, our, one of our managers called and said, uh, you guys got to tone down the rock star image because somebody threw a chair off the balcony at the <laughs> hotel last night, and it's a $100 charge. And I said, Zach... I've been throwing chairs off balconies for a really long time. It has nothing to do with I any success we're getting right now. Yeah, the same <laughs> thing. We've always done stupid shit, so it has nothing to do with, you know, whether or not we're successful or not. No, and the goal of all this really is to film a video in which we get to, like, jump cars and wreck them and stuff yeah. like that, you know, <laughs> do donuts. Mm -hmm. I like the insight, guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, well, just to wrap everything up today, for your fans, we're going to be viewing our interview. Anything you'd like to say to them all? Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Can't believe it that you've supported us all these years, and the outpouring of love right now is humbles us every single day. And we're really, really grateful. Just thank you for your time today. Of course. Really yeah. do appreciate it. Thank you. So yeah, much. my Thanks pleasure. And remember, everyone, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. See you next time. <laughs>